Okay, so just to recap, it's a pack horse in Keswick, Mike Smale, Phyllis of Hake, Provencal Herb Crust, Dizzy Blonde, Zhu. Which I'm going to ban from next year's competition, that word Zhu. Uh, my name's Mike Smale, I'm from the pack horse in Keswick. Um, it's generally a food led pub, uh, catering mainly for tourists, uh, but then we do have quite a certain amount of local trade as well. Well, um, we keep quite a, a range of five different Robinsons real ale, and um, I found the Dizzy Blonde being quite a light type of ale. I thought it would complement the, the fish dish that I'm doing today. A fillet of hake, it's um, a fresh fish from, uh, we, we sourced it from Fleetwood this morning, and then uh, what we do, uh, we make up a butter sauce and uh, incorporate the Dizzy Blonde ale into the sauce with a bit, with a bit of cream. And then the fish is grilled separately with a breadcrumb and herb topping, and then it's served on top of the sauce. Yeah, I think um, I think the, I think the Dizzy Blonde comes through really well um, with with the dish. Um, I think the seasoning is great. Uh, the 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 base has been done really well. Uh, it's al dente. It's not overcooked. Fish may be a little bit overdone, but that's very very difficult in the circumstances they're working under. Yeah, great dish. I think it, I think it all works very well. The flavours work well together. He's done a good job. Now, um, Mark, Paul said he felt fish was a little bit overcooked, and I, and I agree. The thing I wondered with it is, do you think maybe the portion of hake is slightly too big, that he might have overcome that by reducing the size of it and then perfecting the cooking a little? No, I, I think uh, the actual size, uh, from, from my own perspective, was, 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 was the right size. Uh, from the from the, perp from the perspective of presentation, it actually added to a, well, a very well-presented dish. Uh, people are buying with their eyes these days, so if I saw that uh, coming along uh, in, in a restaurant, I would uh, tend to order it. And I, I think probably, I mean, you can probably see when it came up, I think any single person who was sitting in any restaurant pub, you'd be more than happy to have that plonked in front of you, I think without a shadow of a doubt. And um, does it taste the beer in that one? Yeah, the beer is slightly coming through. Mm. It, it, it's, it's because it's such a light beer as well. Um, I think it w that's why it works really well with fish. Um, it's given that light feel to it. Fish is light. It's some light vegetables there, some, some fantastic flavours, like I said before. I think it worked well. I mean, I, I think that's a very good point as well. I think that, you know, the temptation quite often, I think, of something like this when you're cooking with beer is that the temptation is to have the big flavours and slow cook them, where in fact the lighter one, like, like the Dizzy Blonde, actually is lifting that dish quite beautifully. And is you know is really enhancing it rather than actually kind of bringing things down. It's bringing it up, which is which is lovely. I've tried um, one or two of the other beers, but I found them a, a little bit too bitter uh, to make a nice uh, sauce for the fish. So that's basically how I uh, uh, ended up using the little blonde. I think he'd use fresh bread for his breadcrumbs, yeah. and I think what he should have done is, if he'd made, he should have toasted the bread first, so we had crunch straight away. Yeah. So I think what we had was stodgy. Rather than rather than a crispy crust, really. Yeah. Um, but in terms of bringing beer flavour out, it tasted like dizzy blonde, and that, that you know for me that's that's yeah. kind of that's that's superb. Well, it's like the national lottery, isn't it? If you want to win it, you've got to be in it, and that's uh, that's it. Plus, I I, I think I'm going to enjoy the challenge as well. So.